Well, hey, Becoming Me TV. I am so excited to introduce you to my friend Jamie. Jamie, welcome to Becoming Me. Thank you for having me. I am so excited for people to have the opportunity to get to know you, as I've had the opportunity to get to know you for maybe the last year, year and a half. Um, you are in my local community, and you're such a difference maker. You inspire me, and it's just been fun to be along the ride of what you're doing. So um, let me kick off today's interview with maybe the hardest question. Okay. Like, who is Jamie Gilmore? Wow. Who is Jamie Gilmore? Um, Jamie Gilmore is a son. Uh, Jamie Gilmore is a, a Christ follower. Jamie Gilmore is a brother. Uh, Jamie Gilmore is a bunch of things, but um, I'm a former student athlete. I think that's what most people know me as. I was a student athlete. I played college uh, division one football at Temple University. Um, I played there from 2012 to 2016. Um, I had the opportunity after that to transfer over to Western Illinois University. So I was in the Northeast for a while. So I'm a Florida boy, originally born and raised in Florida. Let me start there. So Ocala, Marion County, um, native, I born and raised. Left Florida at age 18, went all the way up to the Northeast of Philadelphia uh, at age 18, where I didn't know anyone. <laughs> so I just went there and I played football, went to Temple University. I graduated with a degree, a uh, business degree from the Fox School of Business there. Uh, then I went up to, I moved, transitioned over to Illinois uh, at Western Illinois University, where I played one year of football. And after that, I, I, I got in a grad pro program for sports management and I graduated there in 2018. Uh, so, you know, that's me, a student athlete, a guy that's uh, got his master's degree. And then that, that led me to transitioning back here in Ocala. Uh, to doing what I'm, what I'm doing now. And uh, so now I'm a mentor. So Jamie Gilmore, he's a mentor. Um, he's a person that's uh, in his community, giving back and trying to help all young men uh, achieve greatness. Oh, it's so good. I love your journey. And I also love that you're back in Florida. Um, yeah. You really are making such a difference here and everywhere you are, um, every environment that you step into. And you're one of the few becoming stories I've had the privilege of. I know you like off the screen too. A lot of people that I meet, we meet digitally, um, but I've seen you in action and what you do and who you are is so incredible. Um, so I would love for you to just take some time and share your story. Like okay. what has made you who you are today? Okay. So um, it's it's funny. I, I, and I love this platform. That's the first of why I should have started off. So thank you for having me. Um, I, I love your platform. Just the whole thing of becoming. I mean, when you think of becoming, I'm even more so doing the work that I do now. I mean, you work with a, a young a person uh, when in the space of mentoring. A young person comes to me um, and, and you know, with a problem. I have a problem. And I'm trying to make it better. Uh, and when you think of becoming, it's like, coming? What am I, what am I trying? Where am I going? You know, the, these questions that we constantly wake up and try to answer uh, for ourselves. So uh, my story, it, it starts off, I, I told you I was an athlete. So coming up in Ocala, I'm um, in Florida in general, uh, we were football, uh, football, a football state. So this is something I did. The people around me, everyone did these things. Um, I was a, a PK, just like yourself, a preacher's kid. So, um, but but my, my, my journey was kind of different because I was a product of teenage parents. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have an older brother and a younger brother. Uh, my parents had two, two kids by the time they graduated high school. Uh, so we grew up, you know, we were young, so we grew up together. Um, so my, my dad wasn't always a pastor. So I experienced this like uh, pre being a pastor and post. So, I, you know, I, I, I was through that transition with him, you know, and I, so we and me and my dad actually got baptized at the same time. It's an experience I'll never forget. Uh, but this, you know, so my experience came through uh, being, I guess, just through that, through that whole experience, you know, being seeing my family transition, uh, knowing at that age, I, 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 you could feel that you're growing up by younger parents. You know, you can see other people's parents and they're older, and your parents are younger. Uh, so it's another experience. But my, my, my family had a different dynamic. We were a strong knit family. Uh, I, my parents raised me on my brothers to always, you know, be together, uh, be as one. One gets in trouble, you all get in trouble. <laughs> like my mom, she would find a, if one person came home and got in trouble, she'll find a reason to discipline the rest of us. Us just uh, just for uh, no reason, but um, that that's just how we grew up. But that that helped us as we got older. Um, that's you know how close we are together, and like you say, we are uh, close. And I see how close you are um, with your sister, and it's kind of um, it's, it's familiar to me because that's that's how I was raised. Yeah. Uh, but my family. 
I tell people when you when you tell people you're a PK, a preacher kid, people look at you like, you know, oh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you know, you get those kind of connotations. So it's uh, but my my experience is kind of different. I'm saying all this to say my experience was different because I knew my dad before and I didn't always grow up in the church. When you think of a PK as a person always in church, doing church things. Um, but this really wasn't the case with me. Um, my, my dad always said, you know, this is a calling God called on my life. I'm not going to push it on you all. I'm just going to walk in this and show you how, you know, it should be done. And that was the best thing my dad ever could be done because uh, I, I know other preachers kid and they kind of uh, went different routes because it was pushed. It was forced on them. Um, but my dad didn't force that on us. Uh, we were able to walk our own paths and see, you know, what God did to, for him. Um, and that, that put that on our, our lives. So uh, being a, a, a athlete, that gives you a certain aggression. You, you approach, you know, life uh, with this mentality, winning each day and um, with just a certain uh, drive to do things. And all my life, I had this drive, you know, I, there's a goal I had, I want to smash this goal, I want to achieve it, you know, the things that I want to do, me, 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 you know, what do I want for my life, you know, I, I want to get a degree, I'm going to get this degree, I want to play on this team, I'm, I want to do this thing, whatever that was, you know, you just tackle those things. Uh, but in my life, I never stopped to ask what God wanted from me, like, God, what do you want for my life, you know, take me out of the picture and say, God, you're in the driver's seat, I'm getting in the back, you know, where are we going? Uh, so, you know, and I'm not saying it in my life, like anything happened bad to me uh, when I was just doing me things, but it it just wasn't what God, you know, God has a purpose for us. And I don't know if you remember uh, me and you sat down and we were brainstorming uh, about cut, cut different. Yeah. I um, mean, we were throwing ideas at each other. And um, it, it's that's why you need to brainstorm people because you just bring things out of you. And you said one thing we were going over my mission at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were like, you, we were thinking, you know, what, what should it be? And I said a saying that someone in college, like one of my college uh, mentors, he used to always say OIG. And I just mentioned this to you. I was like, oh, my, my, you know, my college mentor used to always say OIG. And then I was like, he was like, what that mean? I'm like, own your greatness. Mm -hmm. And then you looked at me like, that should be the mission, like own your greatness. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, so little key things like that. And I'll never forget that moment that I that I had with you. And thank you for that, actually. But I just never forget that moment because it's like now what I wake up every do every day to do is help a young man own his greatness, help a child own his greatness. And for for me, I think my story would have been that much better if I'd had someone in my life early on mm -hmm. saying, you know, own your greatness, you know, be who God made you to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, my life kind of came different. So 2020 was the first time in my life. My story took a turn in 2020. I moved back here home to Ocala and I, I took a pause because, you know, football is over. So we call it PTSD, post-traumatic sports disorder. So it was like, what's next for my life? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, and God, you know, a couple of things I want to do because I told myself I was either going to play in sports or I was going to work in sports. That's why I got a, a master's degree in sports management. Um, I worked with the St. Louis Cardinals for a while. I was like, ah, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. Tried some other things that I wanted. I wanted to work in higher, higher education. I did that. And I was like, nah, this isn't for me. So it's like, what's for me? So I was like, I, I was gone away from home since 2012. So I've been gone for eight years at a time. But I was like, okay, let's move back to Florida. Let's get closer to your family. I was seeing my mom like two times out the year. It was just, it just wasn't right. It's was like, let me, let me go home, get closer to my family. And when I got here, it was the first time I ever in my life just paused and said, hey, Jamie, you're out the picture. God, what do you want for my life? Like, what do, what am I supposed to be be doing? Like football for, you know, for me, anybody asks me, what are you? I'm a football player, you know? So that that was who I was. You know, I, I never answered that question outside of football. Like, who, who are you? Like, what are you doing? Where do you want to go? And it was just football, football, football for me. So I was like, God, what what do you want me to do? Like, who who who, who am I supposed to be? Yeah. What, what do you have me on this earth to do, God? And I, I, I just paused in that moment. And before you know it, uh, I was volunteering in the school system and God just looked like he just slapped me in the face. And like, here it is. He just threw it at me. Like, like here it is. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And um, I had to tell my mom. So this is how it happened. My mom was assistant principal at the school at the time. And she was like, OK, it's so a couple young boys. You know, they are having trouble. You know, I want you and your brother to come, come, come by and, and speak with them. And um, we, we talked to this young group of men. I mean, these group of boys, just every time we can. And first time you're meeting them, I mean, they're telling you their life stories. Um, they're just coming up to you. You know, you just, they're so excited to see you every time. It's like, okay, these kids need something. Mm 
mm-hmm. like they're looking for it. And, and, and representation matters, you know, in this life. Uh, when you, you have to see people like you, you know, see people that look like you do the things, you know, that you want to do. And in this position, that's what we were for those young men. We were, you know, male figures in their life. You know, a lot of them didn't have that. So it's like they needed us. And uh, God was like, here, Jamie, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to be doing. So I think my story went full circle for me being a person, you know, that a football player. Like, Jamie, this is what you're, you, who you are. And it, football did lead me to some great places and helped me do some great things. So I, I love the game of football for that. But now I'm in a space where it's like, okay, you took that experience. I tell my, my uh, mentees, the kids I mentor all the time, like, the mistakes I made in life, I made them for you. You should never have to make the same mistakes I'm making. So when you're thinking of becoming, it's just my story, the full circle. So now I'm here to be in this space uh, to, to, to serve God's children and, and just to help them to, to see, you know, help them to figure out who they are and guide them on their life journey. Wow. I mean, there's so many things from your story that just really stand out to me. Like even 2020 ended up being the changing point in your life. And for so many people, it was a disruptive year. And what a God moment, a God time that you stepped into the lives of these boys to become that mentor that they needed in a year that was just like insane and so crazy for so many people. And a time that a lot of people didn't have clarity. God was bringing so much clarity to you and your life and your story. Um, tell everybody a little bit about Cut Different, okay. what you do. Um, and now you took your mom, asked you to come speak to these boys, mm-hmm. you and your brother do that. But now it's become, as you've mentioned, your yeah. whole life purpose called yeah. Cut Different. So tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to, even to go back to um, what you just said about 2020, it's kind of crazy to think about that year um, in that aspect, because it was a, a very... Um, bad year, you know, yeah. for a lot of people, and, um, for, for, to say the least, right, bad. Um, but, you know, it, 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 for me, it was, a, 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 I guess, where everything was just stopped and, you know, still. So it was a time for me to, you know, pause. And, you know, a lot of great things came out of that year for, for myself. Uh, but to answer your question, Cut Different. So Cut Different Inc., we're a male mentoring organization. Um, our mission is to guide young men to own their greatness. So when you think of greatness, like, Greatness, a lot of people think when you think of greatness is just one thing. Greatness is a lot of things. We all have different fingerprints. Um, God put us here. We all have different purpose in this life. It's like, but my greatness looks different from your greatness. Um, I give this analogy all the time. LeBron James, he's a great basketball player. Uh, Tom Brady, he's a great football player. Serena Williams, she's a great tennis player. They are all great in their own perspective feels. What is your greatness? What are you great at? So helping a young person figure that out. Um, And we believe positive exposure. So we're different from other mentoring programs because we believe in positive exposure. Um, So I told you the story of myself. I was able to leave Ocala and go to Philadelphia. Um, This is one of the best things I ever did for myself. So I I went up to Philly um, and and hearing people talk, you know, I'm from the South and I always get mad. I would talk to my teammates and they all, you know, they were always act like they couldn't understand what I was saying. I'm like, man, what are you saying? Like, I can't understand you just because of my Southern accent. And it used to frustrate me. I'm like, man, like why? I'm talking just like you. Why can't you understand me? But it took for me to go up there, hear other things and learn different cultures. And when, every time I came back home and I heard, you know, my, I start talking to my friends and I'm like, what are you saying? <laughs> you know, because it changed my whole thing because you only know what you know. So when I'm around here um, in Ocala and I'm only talking to my friends, that's all I hear. I go hear other people talk and how they pronounce, you know, their words. And mm-hmm. now I come back home like, what are you saying? So it, it is that's exposure. That's what exposure does. So exposure is taking a person out their environment. And, did, and introducing them, sorry, to people, places, or things that they normally don't have access to. Um, so again, I, I said it all the time, you only know what you know. So if a person, uh, even in our school system, so for a young uh, black male, a young black boy, um, if you're in a school system and I'm telling you every day, you know, you can be this, you can do this, you can go here, you can do all these things. It's like, for me, okay, that may seem like a reality or real to you, but for me, that's not real because the things that you're telling me I can be, the people around me, they are, they are not those things. So I can't see that for myself because the people I come into contact with every day, they aren't those things. So, you know, they you, when you're in a school, if you don't understand where a person comes from, it's hard to try to direct them um, in, in a path to success. 
test because you don't understand the trials and tribulations that they're going through. Uh, so, you know, in your mind, you're like, why doesn't he get it? Or why is he acting this way? But in his mind, he's like, you don't understand what I have to go through, you know, what's going on in my life. So that's the whole, whole purpose of what we're doing. We're trying to take a kid out of his environment and expose him. Um, we believe that's the missing uh, key component to helping a kid be successful um, personally, academically, and professionally. That was, that's the missing component, taking a person out of their environment and showing them different things. And we, we start early. So we believe in prevention as well. Um, we have a lot of great organizations in our community um, and across the world, but it's all reactive. Our world is a very, very reactive world. Problem occurs and we try to jump in uh, and fix a problem, but no one tries to prevent the problem from happening. So we're, we're, we're advocate for prevention. So we start from a grades fourth to eighth grade, get in front of the problem, um, show these young boys, you know, this is, this is, this is all the opportunities that are available to you. You can be this, you can be that, you can do these things from fourth to eighth grade. And then from ninth to 12th grade, uh, we want to send kids off and get them experience, get them working experience, job experience. Um, we, we coined the term using a, a school to career pipeline, creating a school to career pipeline. I'm not pretty, if you ever heard of the school to prison pipeline. So this is a pipeline uh, that, 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 that shows statistics show that, you know, kids starting from in school when they start getting, uh, they get this label at risk and then they start getting in trouble and they start getting all these interactions and then they eventually uh, end up in a juvenile detention. Uh, Justice Center, um, but so we, we're trying to prevent all that school to career, uh, and I, I, it's it's just a beautiful thing to be in this position and, and know because I you know you you sit down with people all the time and they say you know you never you you can't um what's right you can't you can't uh, what am I say calculate I'm I can't think of the right I'm trying to say I'm trying to say calculate uh, motivation when you think of motivation, you know, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you how measure? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about measure. You can't measure motivation. So that, you know, people look for different uh, statistics, but we're in the space, we're trying to motivate. We're trying to give a person hope. We're trying to give, you know, a person when it comes to school, I give another analogy I give. When you think of the school system or a work environment, you have uh, in corporate 500, you have employee engagement things in place to make people who get paid to do what they do want to come to work and want to do the things they want to do, they have to do uh, for ourselves, for a kid. The only reason they're at school be is because society tell them, tells them that's where they need to be. So what are we gonna do to motivate them to want to be there? Um, that's the whole thing at Cut Different. It, it's just changing the dynamics, doing something different, you know, just giving these kids hope. I love that. It's incredible what you're doing. And even like how, when you talk about exposure, all the different businesses that they get to visit, um, business leaders from the mayor to, I mean, recently we were just chatting about a, one of the videos you posted on your Facebook page with you, which you guys, I love all the links so you can connect with Cut Different and Jamie in the notes as well. Um, but just watching the boys that you're mentoring, being able to go and visit and learn and see all the opportunities, like who they can can become and how they can own their greatness is so cool. Like I love what you're doing. So question, are you a coffee drinker? I am not. So I do not drink coffee. And I kind of, it's funny. I kind of, I don't down, but anyone tells me they drink coffee. I'm like, you don't need that. <laughs> you don't need that. Why, why do you need coffee? Please tell me. Why do you need I love coffee? it. I love it. It tastes That's a great good. Reason. That's a great reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great reason <laughs> you drink like tea uh no nah, i'm a water guy i'm just strictly okay. on a water yeah. all right so you're having a cup of water with someone else okay. on their own becoming journey and you're trying to okay. encourage them to be who god made them to be mm -hmm. what would you say to encourage them i would tell them just be still um, and, and that point where you're just trying to figure it out and, and, and those moments are going to come. Embrace that. Embrace those hard times, those hard times when you're just scratching your head. It's like, what's next? You know, what am I supposed to be doing? Um, embrace it and just be still, you know, uh, go to God and you just ask him, God, what do you want for my life? That's the biggest thing I've, I've done to this point in my life. Um, all the accomplishments I had in, in sports and school and all these things. The best moment of my life is, is the moment where I, I let God get in the driver's seat and it take me where I'm supposed to go. And even even now, I'm still I'm still becoming. I'm still on the path. I'm still uh, walking in the light that God wants me to do. I'm still listening to God and asking Him, you know, to to to, to direct my footsteps. Uh, but it, it's no better feeling to know that you're doing His work. Um, and I know when you're in the space of doing His work, that that there's the only great things can come because He He won't. Let
let anything else, you know, happen. If if you're you, you're you're following His Word and doing the things that He wants you to do, He would not lead you in the path of destruction. So, um, I, I would tell that person to, to just be still, um, listen listen for God's Word, and, and just you know attack each day, attack each day like like no other. Um, but you you have to you have to just listen and figure out what you're supposed to be doing because a lot of times, you know, we we just be all over the place, you know, because we just the direction that we're going in. So just listen to God. That is so good. So hard to do, but it is really the foundation for who we're becoming. And so I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's incredible advice. Um, You know, if somebody was watching and they wanted to connect with you online, where could people connect with you and cut different? Yeah, so cut different. Uh, we're on face. We're on pretty much all the face. Uh, the social media platforms. So if you go to Facebook and cut different Inc. on Facebook, so cut different with a K K U T different, um, and you can go on our website cutdifferent.org. dot uh, We're on Instagram cut different underscore Inc. And we're also on LinkedIn at Cut Different Inc. You can find us on all those. And those, those are the best ways to get on, um, get to me um, I'm on those pages. I, I do all the, you know, posting and stuff on those pages. So I'm on there. I really don't have any. Um, I do have one, but I'm not on it that much, a personal page. But follow me on those pages. That's how you can uh, figure out more about me and Cut Different as well. Uh, we're doing great things. Uh, we want to build this business up here, uh, this organization up here in Ocala and be able to scale it and, and put it in other communities and, and just help young men across the world own their greatness. I love it. We will have all of those links for you guys. You can easily connect with Jamie and cut different. Thank you so much for sharing your story, who you are, who you're becoming. Like I'm just, I'm cheering you on big time. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I I just want to tell you like, this is a a beautiful platform, you know, just letting people, you you never know what, you know, your words uh, can do for the next person. You know, when people People are, are looking for things that these are the platforms where people come to it and they find, you know, what they've been looking for. And it may be through, you know, listen to another person or uh, from them even just speaking to you. Um, this becoming just the whole name of this. You think of becoming. I just feel I was thinking about it before I got on. Um, when you think about becoming, it's like, when do, do you ever stop becoming? Like, you know, is that that's a I just feel like that's an ongoing process because we're always, you know, you know, just, you know, in the path, you know, listening to God and just being who God wants us to be. So uh, kudos to you for this platform. Kudos to all you do um, in our community as well. You know, you all church hope and yourself to do in our community because this is a beautiful thing and keep it going. Well, thank you, Jamie. I appreciate you.